this particular uh, act has been as a bill for decades at the national assembly but anyways uh, joining us this morning on the platform on the floor of god's own state we have uh, someone from the niger delta joining us uh, a niger delta activist and uh, he will be speaking about uh, the implication for the host communities and the agitation so much has been said about that particular act right now uh, mr a uh, comrade rather comrade success jack is joining us a uh, comrade glad to have you join us welcome to the platform on flow fm yeah my pleasure sir you're welcome so how did you receive the news uh, when that uh, uh, beer uh, was uh, uh, signed uh, by the president into an act and now it is a, 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 a it is a law there is a legal framework of course uh, uh, surrounding uh, the oil and gas sector in the country well for us in the niger delta who have been at it for quite some time now we were we didn't receive the news with too much shock but uh, we believe that it could have been far better than it truly is now Okay. Uh, but if it provides a basis for us to you know to agitate further provide mm. something put something on the table and then we can now discuss further because societies evolve the process of law making also should evolve and mm. so if we have this now we can now discuss for, uh, you know further even though it's not do, do you think there is a reason to jubilate especially for niger delta states and uh, uh, for states uh, where oil are being explored for now, there is no reason to jubilate yet. Mm -hmm. uh, because we are taking this with a pinch of salt. You know, there is so much suspicion. When government comes out with a law, there is another thing about implementation. What's going to be the spirit behind the implementation? Is it going to be one of sincerity? Is it going to be one of uh, uh, selective implementation and all of that? As I speak to you, on, even with this PIB, on, but until the PIB, we had an oil and gas industry that was one sector, but with three different laws. You had the GMOU, that's what they call the Global Memorandum of, of Understanding, which in its essence was very criminal and alien to the Nigerian society because there was no law backing the implementation of GMOU. No law, no ratification, no okay. act of National Assembly. It had no basis operating in our oil and gas industry. But I don't know why it continued for all this long. So the GMOU was operating. And then you also had the Nigerian Content, uh, Nigerian uh, Content Development Act or Law of 2010, you know, which was partially implemented because our engagements with the Executive Secretary proved that you know they had too much limitations. I give you example. Okay. For instance, you know that that law provides that everywhere they have considerable uh, oil and gas operations. There is supposed to be an administrative office that has the capacity to award, to procure an award contract. Even undertake things like TRO, that's a, what they call a training and research. Undertake, you know, every single thing that they are doing from the headquarters now. That law was not implemented to that extent. They had so many provisions. As a matter of fact, if you go by the Nigerian Content Development Act of 2010, that law provides that every every single skill that is being outsourced, we are supposed to develop in, um, indigenous manpower to replace that outsourcing between three and four years. As I speak to you, we still have a lot of expatriates earning foreign uh, dollars from the oil and gas industry. Those laws were not, you know, implemented to the very later. Apart from the um, uh, Laws. We also had a somewhat of load operating coming from the deep terror and all other kinds of places and all of that. So it was one sector that had too many and the foolish were not concerted or hegemonized. And also, even one, there have been on so many areas. But, you know, the gray area that, that is uh, trying to raise a lot of dust is uh, uh, concerning Chapter 3 that has to do with the host uh, communities uh, development fund. Okay. So, yeah, it's raising quite a lot. And then even in Chapter 1, where it talks about the governance that the petroleum industry governance, you, you know, sector that, that, you know, created the authority and the commission. 
two different things to look at two different uh, things one is for upstream and midstream the other one is for purely downstream sorry upstream and then the other one is midstream and downstream you know if you look at the governing board there's no reflection of federal character so it raises quite a lot of questions it makes a provision for a career civil servant of grade level this is make provision for some professional bodies and all of that and statutory members but then it does not it, it doesn't reflect federal character now again that will in become all, an in issue. all these in, in what you term loopholes in this uh acts that has been uh, that is now a law it was formerly built uh, this petrol um, industry act in the loopholes who are we to blame it has been in the national assembly for decades and there are lawmakers that were also part of the process during the debate at the national assembly that are from niger delta and one will be asking some of this agitation some of these grievances of yours that uh, you've bared to the front this morning on the platform uh, your lawmakers weren't aware they were part of the process of making the of uh, of making this uh uh, uh act uh, uh, becoming a okay. law and uh, governing okay. the oil and gas let sector. me let me explain one issue if you check the number of house of rep members you have from kanu state alone is about what you have in the entire south south and if you are talking about niger delta is basically south south imo abia and ondo so how many lawmakers do we have to push a matter through? If you check the first version, I think the 2020 version mm, yes. of that PIB bill, you will find that there was no provision for for an additional 30% uh, profit of NMPC operations going to going to uh, uh, frontier acreage for development of frontier acreage, which many people, you know, suspiciously allude to it being implemented more in the northeast where they are you know and then the, the gongola basin and some other areas in the north okay even though for some of us we interpret it uh, if we interpret it more correctly the law says that this fund shall be applied to all frontier acreages simultaneously so it's not going to be a let us finish the gongola basin before we come to niger delta basin or we come to that's the truth about it there's no sentiment about it but if you check that 2020 uh, uh, version there was no provision for such things so many people interpret it to be providing more money or funds to play around with not so, so, you know, are you are you okay are you okay maybe, maybe we just uh, 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 be straight with uh, your standing right now concerning the 30 percent uh, uh, frontier basin now because we have someone from the presidency a few minutes, few minutes ago. He these said, are concerned. Uh, okay. We are not okay with it because go and check how many billion have been sunk into Bongola basin alone. Go and check how much has been sunk into the oil fields in Bauchi alone and all those places. What oil have we discovered and we are sinking more money into those places? It's counterproductive. We have oil discovered and proven reserves within the Niger Delta. It's only economical, it's only frugal for a businessman to put, to maximize his strength. And that's the Niger Delta. So why are we shying away from it? Why are we trying to distribute this wealth across to reach some other person in whatever guise? We are not okay with it. That's why I was trying to point out, you, you know, all those details. And those are areas that are gray enough you know to to elicit uh, this kind of reactions you get from the niger delta uh, but he, what 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 is the point of contention concerning the three percent are you saying it is too small or it should be increased uh, because that was also an issue when it was at the public hearing stage at the national 3% assembly three percent is, is too small for niger delta host communities yeah why, do, why are you saying things, that yes now the three percent is too small because see when you come to if you don't live in the niger delta you won't understand what we call acid rain go to every single community in the niger delta and when it rains put a white basin under the rain you see black deposits that's not that that acid rain that rain is causing collateral economic damages all the things the rust, the rate of rust and decay is more than a hundred times faster than you have elsewhere in the country how do we cook you see those acid rain oil spillages and all those cyclic hydrocarbons they are they go down to the soil pollute the soil because they are non bio they are not biodegradable so they stay there in the soil they have been absorbed even in the plants we eat 
And so genetically, every man in the Niger Delta that lives within the Niger Delta is altered even genetically. Our life expectation is being reduced. Nobody is talking about these things. As I speak to you once every year or twice every year, go to every community in the Niger Delta, they will tell you this phenomenon. There is this tremor, tremor that happens. Our houses will crack and you see it with these life formations. Nobody is talking about these things. Now we live under this perpetual sentence of agony. And somebody will stay in the comfort of his house or somewhere in, the, in some other region that does not know what the pains of the oil and gas industry is to say we are asking too much. That is not fair enough. That is not, as I speak to you, there is urgent need, and that's what the Niger Delta Activist Forum under my leadership has been calling for. Urgent need to reevaluate and do a fresh environmental impact assessment, or right now they call it ESHA, Environmental Social Health Impact Assessment, on the entire Niger Delta and to actually cross check the viability or otherwise of the continued you know, um, uh, uh, progress of the oil and gas industry. If not, our lives may be at stake. And then you cannot continue to empower a country over the well-being and survival of the people. So when we cry, we have a reason. Beyond just education, education, our lives are at stake, my brother. Interesting. If you say your uh, uh, the night the lives of those in the uh, Niger Delta are safe, then one will be asking the Minister of State uh, uh, for Petroleum Resources is from that region of the country talking about. Uh, uh, Timmy Pere Silva, and he said, and uh, that the idea behind the petroleum industry bill signed into law by the president is to attract investors. And I'm quoting him. Uh, he said, as a country, we have a direction that we are going to. So right now, if you talk about three percent in the act for us in the Niger Delta, meaning he's speaking for uh, those in the Niger Delta, I will ask three percent of something. Is that not better than one hundred percent of what you don't know? What we want to achieve is the philosophy behind this bill, which is to attract investors to Nigeria to produce as much as this crude on the ground as possible. This is what we want to achieve. I don't know how you want to react to that. Okay. He is a Niger okay. Delta, and yes. I, I believe don't... he should have an idea of what the people are suffering. And he's close, uh, close to the president, and uh, should be able to present this to the president if it is uh, too small. Okay, let me tell you. Dimitri Silva is a core Niger Delta man, he's an Ijom man, no doubt about that. But don't forget that the position he occupies is Minister of State for uh, Petroleum Resources, not Minister of State for Niger Delta Affairs. Now, his primary responsibility is to do his political duty. Like you said, that thing is to attract investors to Nigeria. And now when the investors come and profit is being made, this is the sharing formula which is lopsided against the Niger Delta people. That's what we are saying. So he's there first to defend his political interest, which is his loyalty to the president. And the president is looking after not just the Niger Delta, the entire Federal Republic of Nigeria. And the policies are skewed against our people. Dimitri Silva's interest is to make sure his boss succeeds, not the Niger Delta interest first. That's the point I'm trying to raise here. Now, so even though he's a Niger Delta man. Hello, sir. I'm getting you. Please go on. Yeah, so even if he's a Niger Delta man, he's not good there to, to propagate the Niger Delta interest over the national interest, which is boss, the president mm. represents. Now, having said that, you must also understand that when these people come to do this business, Nigeria takes the chunk of the money. And then with a system that does not that is not economically democratic or there is no resource democracy, you see that the center still takes the bulk. Mm. And so it goes back to the foot of what we are saying uh, okay. and what our agitation C is. Comrade uh, Success Jack, uh, before I let you go this morning, is it proper to uh, allow uh, uh, ethnic coloration uh, in some of our uh, uh, agitations to allow it override uh, our sentiments uh, for example the issue of frontier basing the issue of the three percent because uh, a couple of minutes i was speaking with uh, mr juring and he said that 
some of those agitating for more than three percent they've not even checked the actual amount the host communities will get yearly on this which he said well, that it. well, it, he said that it's more than the budget uh for uh ndc so it should be enough to take care of some of this uh it's, uh, about, it's about 500 is about 500 uh, billion uh, according to what is being projected okay about let 500 billion you, okay yes about that let me tell you ask the question how many communities are there in the niger most of these communities we are talking about is not accessible is is, is in the oceania is inside the heart of the sea the creeks mm. how do you assess these places if you want to do a project that's why julio Vega came up with an assessment years back that doing a project in the niger delta is 10 times a civil project is 10 times more expensive than anywhere else so if you throw that money naturally you see have you checked the ecological impact like i said even and the crops we eat in the niger delta is chemicalized are you aware that just few months ago last year that millions of fish washed were washed ashore dead on the atlantic shores starting from ondo the niger delta down to 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 cross river go and check what was responsible the federal government we pushed that matter and federal government did an analysis and came out and said uh, it is a uh, it is a uh, household uh, uh, household uh, refuse that were dumped in the sea now simultaneously all yes yes mm -hmm. simultaneously all across the niger delta people decided to come out all at once uh, you know and then seriously ganged up and trill this thing that now made cadmium more prolific around the atlantic shoreline my brother is a fat life these are results of and consequences of the oil and gas industry that thing you see that happened is because of the dumping of production water the chemical poisoning from production water which is a high highly hydrocyc um, uh, um, uh, cyclic hydrocarbon in nature so these are the different so the point i'm trying to make here eh? You say we are putting at ethnic coloration, you say we are crying too much, we say we need this amount, go and check the amount of damage. If you want to build a 10-story building, you don't tell me that you've given me 2 million, uh, the, uh, Mr. Tom built his uh, bungalow with uh, 10. What is what is the impact on ground? That's what we check. So it's not to say we are giving this too much, they're always crying, eh, eh, people are dying. Should we continue to produce oil and make Nigeria healthy over the lives of the people? If we are not and we didn't settle there and we are not part of Nigeria, Nigeria will things up. That's the point. Mm. All right, uh, comrade. I want to really appreciate your time this morning on the platform. I do appreciate your analysis also. National President of the Niger Delta Activist Forum and the Chairman of uh, Ijo Community Abuja. Uh, thank you very much, comrade. Uh, success, Jack, for joining us this thank morning on the much. platform. We do appreciate you. Thank you very much. You're welcome.